Welcome to the Dentamax Tip of the Week. Today we're going to talk about patient recall. When it comes to patient recall, there seems to be two main methods. The first method, the traditional method that most offices have used, is to let the patient out of the office after their recall appointment, and then down the road later on, call the patient, email the patient, or send a postcard to the patient to remind them that they are eligible for another recall appointment. The second method, which I find to be more effective, is to make the next recall appointment, the next cleaning appointment, x-ray or exam appointment, when the patient is still in their office, in your office for their current recall appointment. Even though it might be six months or even just three months down the road for a paint perio appointment, still make that appointment way well out in advance and then remind them via emails or, or phone calls or a postcard about that next appointment. Why is that more effective? And convince the patient to come back to your office when they know they have an actual appointment made. Um, and with the tools within Danamax, it works. Uh, one of the offices I worked in, um, we increased our revenues in our office, in our particular case, we increased our revenues by $100,000 when we employed the second method of recall. And so that is the method I'm going to show you today. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, we have an appointment for Dean Adams. He's come into our office um, for a recall appointment. And it looks like with our service abbreviations here on our appointment, he came in for a comprehensive exam, some bite wings, a panel, and some profies. So we're going to go ahead and right-click on his appointment. And we will now go ahead. He's finished with his appointment, so we will set it complete. Okay. Well, the first screen that you'll see here is that uh, you'll be able to post his current procedures over to his ledger. So we've done all these things. We'll go ahead and post all. Then you'll have a second screen that will pop up. This is your recall screen. If there is a recallable procedure on the appointment, exam, cleaning, an x-ray, uh, then the screen will pop up, prompting you to make another appointment out in the future for that patient. Uh, in this case, uh, we can see what we did today. Uh, we'll show all the last procedures that we've done. We can have multiple dates on here by procedure code. And so we can see today that we did a comprehensive oral evaluation. Okay, we also did the bite wing. Uh, we did a pano. Uh, we also did the profi. Here at the bottom of the screen, um, we can see our frequencies. And so uh, we'll note that uh, we can do two exams per year. Um, our full mouth x-ray series, that's once every three years. Okay, We just did one today, so we probably can't do one in six months without the patient having to pay for that out of pocket. Okay. Another neat thing is that we have our recall notes here in the upper right hand corner. So there's another screen that uh, you can use to, to, to bring people back into the system. Um, or make notes about your recalls, and that note is here appearing in the right hand corner of the screen. And so, as the office manager, I have all the tools that I need to make good, accurate decisions as it pertains to recall. Um, so, using my frequencies here, my notes here, and my procedures with the last date that they came in, I can then effectively decide what's going to appear on my next recall appointment. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this comprehensive to a periodic oral evaluation. I'm not going to do a panel uh, again. I'll probably just do two bite wings and I'll do another profi. Okay, so I've gone ahead using my notes here at the bottom and using my um, my dates here and my additional notes. I can go ahead and click on schedule now. What the program will do is it'll take me out six months from now and pin board or place my my recall appointment six months out on October 20th. And then from here, if that date doesn't work, I don't want to go backwards. Okay, because then, you know, it's from my frequency notes, the insurance won't cover it, but if the 20th doesn't work, and Saturday probably won't, I can go forward with my mini calendar until I find a date that does work, and then move that appointment off to that date. Okay, pretty easy. Um, now, what I will do is I will remind that patient like crazy as I get approach this date, because this appointment was made on uh, April the 19th, 2012, and October 24th is quite a ways away. And so we'll uh, go into our report tools here, and uh, we'll go ahead and type in reminder. There's a wonderful reminder card called uh, Reminder Card for Patients with Scheduled Recall Appointments. So if you double click on that, for anybody from October 1st to um, October the 31st, um, maybe a month in advance, we'll set out these, these postcards uh, to the patients. We can also uh, pull up our uh, appointment reminder list. And uh, 
call everybody well ahead of time before that October date. Say okay here, and then Dean will also be on our list there, so we can call him well in advance to change the status from unconfirmed to confirmed. Okay. So if that time does not work for Dean, well ahead in advance, we'll find out, so we can change his his appointment to a different time, or go ahead and change it to a different day. Just go to the appointment itself. Um, we can go ahead and add it to our little clipboard, and then move it to another day if needed. Sometimes patients don't want to make a recall appointment six months out in advance. They don't want to comply with that system. And that's all right if that's the case. Hopefully most do, but for the ones who don't, um, let's go ahead and go through that scenario, what you would do. Here we have John Doe uh, uh, came in today uh, for his periodic oral evaluation and for a prophy and x-rays, some bite wings. Um, let's go ahead and we will um, set his appointment to be complete. We actually did these items today. We'll go ahead and post all these over to the ledger screen. We have our create new recall appointment pop up to make our appointment six months out, but he doesn't want to do that. So we'll go ahead and click on schedule later. Okay. Uh, and so John Doe does not have a recall appointment six months out. Um, what, what you'll do um, from time to time, you'll go to your list menu and go down to recall list. Okay. And if you have holes in your hygiene schedule, you go to this list to pull those people who are out of the system to bring them back into the system. I.e., bringing them back into the system means that they have a recall, an outstanding recall appointment. And so um, as we approach October, we notice that we have some holes in our schedule. And so we'll go ahead and do a, um, um, go, we'll go ahead and view our um, patients who are eligible to come back in for a recall appointment in October. And of course, John Doe pops up. We can see his next eligible date is 10-20-2012. This will show you a whole list of the patients within the range that you selected with their next available recall date. And so as you call these patients, um, you can go ahead and click on View Note, uh, add a note to what's going on. So what you'll do is you'll use this interactive recall list here to get them back into our recall system. They get them with a recall appointment set. And so there you have it. There's my recommendations for recall. Um, speaking from personal experience, running a front desk, I find that this is very effective, making a recall appointment out in advance and then reminding like crazy for those patients to come in. Hope you've enjoyed this tip of the week. I look forward to next week.